I don't think I was the only person to go into 2020 really thinking like, this is going to be a good year. <laughs> like, I think I'm going to do some of my best work. I've got a really good feeling about this. And yeah, then I, my mum called and said, it's time to go home. Yeah, basically me and Bill are friends and he's also really good friends with Autumn DeWilde. Me and Autumn had been talking about Free for a while and it was it was a hard one to think of a video for because I guess the premise of the song is that my anxiety or whatever it is, these intrusive thoughts, they just kind of like are with me all the time and it's something I've always known. And so we were like, there has to be some kind of constant presence that's always there. And Autumn just went, why not Bill? And it just seemed right. We couldn't really figure out why. We were like, let's just ask him and see if he'll do it. And he just said yes. And you know, if Bill Nye says yes, just like, okay, great. We're making this video. Working with Bill was just an absolute dream come true. Everything he does is so elegant and kind of perfect. So what you don't know is while he's on the phone, he was literally playing my anxiety. So everything he was saying, he was like, Right, yeah, we're going through her childhood right now. We are going through something she said to someone a week ago and she keeps replaying it because she's wondering if she's being weird. Was she weird then? Are they mad at her? We're going through the list of people that could be mad at her today. Yep, yep, yep. So he was like actually in character as my anxiety the whole time. He was just such a nice person to spend time with. I'm so lucky to have had that experience. When I was making Highest Hope, I was experimenting a lot more with basically writing poetry. And a lot of this record, the lyrics have come from, when I started to write poetry, it was as if a different kind of voice of Florence and the Machine emerged, which was much more upfront. I think a lot of the previous albums dealed with in a lot more um, metaphors and mythology. And I feel like with Dance Fever, it's very much a mix of the two. There's mythology, but I think a lot of the upfrontness that came from there was something to me about how a word on paper, it became more visceral to me when I would write poetry and I, I thought even less that people would ever see it. So I was just so, became brutally truthful in a lot of what I was writing and that, that kind of stayed. And I think that has led to some of the more kind of upfront lyrics. You know, sometimes I wonder if I should be medicated. Those are kind of little poems I was writing to myself. Again, never ever, with the idea that anyone would see them or that I would ever put them in a song. But writing poetry just like really ended up informing how then I went and started writing songs like Free. I was meant to at least write a huge chunk of Dance Fever in March 2020. I flew to New York. I got one week uh, in Electric Lady with Jack Antonoff. We managed to write Free and ironically Back in Town was the last song I wrote before I actually had to go home. <laughs> so yeah. Free was actually one of the last songs I wrote before the lockdown. We didn't see each other for a year and a half. Like we, um, we started working together because he had wanted to work together for a while. And I was like, well, let's just, you know, I had some time after Highest Hope. I was like, let's get in the studio and experiment. It's kind of, there's never any like choosing of a producer until now at this stage in my career, I'm like, let's make something and see. And then the first song we wrote was King together. So, so I was like, okay, this is good. And then the next one was Choreomania, which is also one of my favorite songs from the record. So that was around 2019. So with those two songs that actually, yeah, two of my favorites, I went, okay, yeah, let's do this whole record together. Like this is, this is going really well. And yeah, that's kind of what we set out to do in March, 2020 with all, with all the, um, um, I don't think I was the only person to go into 2020 really thinking like, this is going to be a good year. <laughs> like, I think I'm going to do some of my best work. I've got a really good feeling about this. And yeah, then I, my mum called and said, it's time to go home. And I didn't, I didn't see Jack for a year and a half actually. And that's when I met Dave Bailey and the record just kind of morphed into something different. This record has been kind of like completely morphed and contorted by the times that it was in. Like, I started off with a very uh, analog live record in mind and as the gigs shut and as live music sort of vanished, the whole ethos of the record like completely changed and so much more sub bass suddenly came on and this darker energy emerged. I think 
it's an album for the really like long, <laughs> the like really long standing Florence and the Machine fans. I think if you've been a fan since Lungs, it feels like to me this album is a kind of bridge between all of the records. I feel like it got to a stage where I was taking elements of everything that I learned in the last 10 years, 10, 15 years now, and kind of refining it and making it the best that it could be. So I think if you have been on the journey since the start, I think there's so many elements from the last, I wouldn't say it's not like, I think with every album, I don't try and reinvent myself. I just try and like, evolve what I like doing to the best that it can be. And sometimes I feel like that involves a rejection of the past. But on this one, I don't think it was, I don't think there's been a rejection of any, any element of sort of what Florence the Machine is that I like. I think I've kind of embraced them all. I think that's what I actually really love about it. And it's meant that it's made me reassess so many old songs like it really feels like it connects to all of the past work somehow like i just tried to make what i like but make it the best that i could out of all those elements which is kind of always pretty genreless and i like so many different styles of music that there's a complete mix there but yeah i think this is kind of it feels like the sort of apex of all of the past florence the machine records Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.